My four years playing at Syracuse was some of the best times of my life. I grew so much, and I think my growth off the court coincided with my success on the court. I became more confident. Sims kicks it out to Autry. He, begins the two guard and he has just become a totally different player. Absolutely. And I had nothing but love and appreciation for this place because it was a place that, you know, really kind of set me towards a mature path and it prepared me to be ready for anything once I left this place. You know, we've always tried to, to help our players to get better on the court and off the court. And, you know, you get these kids at 17 and they obviously have got a long way to go and they do go a long ways in four years. And I had good experiences and I had bad experiences, but I also had a place that stood by me. And so I seen it all. I knew what loyalty meant. And, you know, once I left this place, you know, I, I thought I was ready for the challenges of, of manhood. Well, you know, when I first saw him, he was a young player, sophomore. He was probably played one of the best games I've seen. They won the city championship. You know, clearly we we're going to be a great college player. And, you know, the recruitment was good. He had a lot of interest in us, and, you know, he had some big schools after him, obviously. So it was just a matter of me just getting on campus, talking to the coaches. And once that happened, you know, it was pretty much made up in my mind when I was leaving Syracuse, I knew I wanted to go there. Sometimes recruiting goes a little easier than others. <laughs> oh, happy to be here. And then when I came here as a freshman, I had a chance to play alongside of someone like Billy Owens, LaRon Ellis, and Dave Johnson, you know, an older group of guys. And they didn't ask me to do too much, they just asked me to be consistent and play hard. And uh, I was used to that just because of, you know, where I came from. Dave Johnson swallowed a baseline back to Archery, hits a three. You know, I never doubted myself. Um, I knew I was good enough, or at least thought I was good enough. And I think that's, you know, more than half the battle. And I had an opportunity to play. I mean, he was good right away. There was never an issue. You know, he had obviously had really good games all the way through, but he had some, he had some unbelievable games. You know, obviously the Syracuse Georgetown rivalry, that was something that, you know, I think if you went to Georgetown, you look forward to playing against Syracuse. And I think if you went to Syracuse, you look forward to playing against Georgetown. Uh -huh. Look at this move. Up tree for two. And the Orange Men of Syracuse escaped with a two-point win. Once we started winning, I started getting recognition. So winning has always been my motivating factor. I was not motivated by stats. I just wanted to contribute and win. He can score, he can defend. He, he just was a, a really good all-around point guard. I think I was a leader, facilitator that gave them confidence that probably shared the ball a little bit more. For being won, but he led the Big East in 1981. Whoa, Andre! I was constantly always thinking about the next play, who wasn't in the game, trying to get people going, because I always had the confidence that I can get myself going at any time. captains, the veteran players, show the young players, this is what we do on the court and off the court. And, you know, Adrian did that right from the beginning and uh, became a better leader every year. It was a big deal to be named a captain, and especially a captain at Syracuse at a, such a prestigious program like this. I thought I matured a lot to get that title. So it was always exciting for me and it, it meant a lot to me and I took that and carried that not only on the court, but off the court as well by the time I was named a captain. I knew when he got done playing, you just felt that he is going to be uh, a guy that can be a really good college coach. And on the basketball court, you know, he's always had a feeling for the game of what we're trying to do here, what, what I needed. I think the advantage was just knowing coach and knowing his expectations of the necessary things. Grit. 
plan hard, plan together, and bringing it every day. I think that helped me make that transition when I came back as a coach, knowing those are things and those were his expectations. And he had a lot of responsibility for me. He did a lot of coaching. Uh, my assistants do a lot of coaching. But he took over in terms of running the practice, um, getting the other coaches in position. He's made that adjustment right away. And that's, uh, that's a big adjustment to make. It was an exciting time. It was, it was one of those things as a basketball player, if you go into coaching and you get a chance to go back and coach at your alma mater, it's a dream come true. And if you can go back and help students and, and help impact the basketball program that impacted you, I mean, dream come true. And when a guy then becomes a head coach, you know, you see how he changes and how he takes charge of things. And he's ready for that. You know, he did that as a point guard. Uh, he had responsibility here as an assistant coach. And Adrian has had all the experience he needs and he's ready to go. When you follow and you take over a program, and that coach before you is one of the greatest of all time. I think the best thing that you can do is just try to do the best that Adrian Autry can do. You know, it's just, you, you can't mimic Jim Beheim. You know, you can take the characteristics, you can take, you know, the work ethic, but you can't try to do the same things that he did. You know, what made him great is because it was his. And it'll work out. And if, if it doesn't, you did what you felt you wanted to do. You always do that in coaching. There's a lot of voices, but you only listen to one voice, your voice. <laughs>